Nuke is not limited to a 2D space. In fact, it has a complete 3D environment built right in. For example, here's a 3D ship and a 3D sphere. In order to see the 3D environment, you can go to the View menu where it says 2D and switch that to 3D. And there's the environment. In order to change this view, which is the default camera, you can use your Alt or your Option keys along with your mouse buttons. For example, Alt left mouse button scrolls, Alt middle mouse button zooms, and Alt right mouse button orbits. Let's see what we have in the scene. There's a 3D camera, a spotlight, a point light, a primitive sphere, an imported spaceship, and a large primitive card in the background. Let's take a look at the node network and see what we need to make a 3D scene happen. The node with the most connections is the scene node. The scene node groups together lights and geometry in order to pass those on to a render node. In order to render the 3D scene so it becomes 2D, you have to have some type of render node. In this case, there's a scanline render node. Connected to the scanline render is a 3D camera. Connected to the scene node are the two lights. There's a spotlight and the point light. If I open up the properties on spotlight, you can see common options like color and intensity, and in the case of the spotlight, cone angle. There are also two pieces of primitive geometry here. There's a sphere and the card. This would be a good time to note that 3D nodes have a rounded pill-like shape as opposed to the rectangular 2D nodes. You can create a light or a primitive piece of geometry through the 3D menu. Here you can make your point or your spot plus a direct and a few specialized lights like the one it's called light which you can use to import lights from other programs like Maya. There's also the geometry menu which has a primitive such as card or other shapes like cube and cylinder. You can transform lights and geometry. For example, if I open up the sphere, you'll see that there's a translate, rotate, and scale property. Once this is open, you'll also see that there's a transform handle. If you click drag that handle along an axis, you can move it in that direction. For example, Y. Of course, you can also just enter values into the properties panel. Lights also have their own set of transforms. Now one new feature is the fact that lights can cast shadows right here in the 3D environment. For example, if I go to the Spotlight and go to the Shadows tab, you'll see there's a place to click on Cast Shadows. Let's go back to the 2D view. I can see the shadow of the sphere right here on the spaceship. Now aside from shadows, of course, you can animate all these properties. You can animate the light changing over time as well as the geometry. You'll notice that there's animation menu buttons beside all these properties. You can key these as you would any other node inside Nuke. You'll notice that the two pieces of geometry have shaders connected to their image pipes. These are necessary for the surfaces to be lit correctly. The sphere has a fong, which is similar to one you might have in a program like Maya. The card has an emission shader, which just has the emissive component, or the ambient color component. Now in terms of the spaceship, that has to be imported through a read geo node. Regio node has a place to bring in a file, and this supports FBX files, or OBJ files, or Alembic files, ABC. If there's animation in the file, Nuke will recognize it. For example, with the FBX file, you might have multiple takes. Nuke will recognize that, and you can choose the animation take. If I go back to the 3D view, scrub the timeline, we'll see that the ship is pre-animated, and this animation was created in Maya. There's also material connected to the image pipe of the Regio. Now because the UV texture space came through the FBX file, in order to map the geometry, you just need to bring in the texture bitmaps through read nodes and connect them to the shader. For example, here's a diffuse bitmap connected to the map D or map diffuse. Here's a specular map connected to the map S or map specular. Let's go back to the 2D view. Now if anything is animated, you can also activate motion blur. To do that, you go to the render node. And for example, with the scanline render, Go to the multi-sample tab and then change samples to a higher number like 8. At that point the motion blur will appear as you can see right here. The higher the samples number, the higher the quality. So there's a brief introduction to Nuke's 3D environment. Keep in mind that any node you need to create for this you can find through the 3D node menu. This includes all your shaders, geometry, lights, scene node, and cameras. Aside from animating lights and geometry, you're also free to animate cameras. 
they'll have their own set of transforms. In any case, I'd suggest exploring this component of Nuke.